This is Tristan. He has a neurodevelopmental disorder called Tourette syndrome. Tourette syndrome, also known as Tourette, is a common neurodevelopmental disorder. Its onset is in childhood, characterized by multiple motor tics and at least one vocal tic. Both multiple motor and one or more vocal tics have been present at some time during the illness, although not necessary concurrently. The tics may wax and wane in frequency but have persisted for more than one year since its first onset. The disturbance is not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance, for example cocaine, or another medical condition, for example Huntington's disease. So tell me the first time you have experienced ticks. I don't know, I was maybe like six and it started, I could just like say some stuff, like it just start randomly, I can't control it, I'll just be a bucket or something like that. But I, it's nothing I can do about it, so I was just kind of confused at first, but uh, we figured out it was Tourette's, so no. Well, how does the, the Tourette disorder affect your communication? Uh, well, I mean, usually it doesn't affect it too much. Like the person will be caught off guard at first, so they'll fork, and they'll kind of be, I don't know, they'll laugh about it maybe after, but usually they just kind of are surprised and I'll explain it and they'll be more understanding because it's, um, it's like, they know I can't control it. It's not really something I can do. So. The leading sign of Tourette's and the most common reason for referral for consultation is the presence of tics. Typically, the first tics to appear are facial tics like eye blinking, nose twitching, or grimacing. Tics are repetitive, involuntary, or semi-voluntary, short-lasting stereotype movement called motor tics or vocalization called phonic tics. The symptoms often begin in early childhood around age 5, but may occur as early as age 1 or 2, or as late as the age of 17. The tics may increase in frequency and severity in adolescent, and even though the condition is chronic, there is a tendency to improve in adulthood. By age 18, 50% of patients with Tourette syndrome might be symptom-free. However, some individuals might see a recurrence of the symptom later in life. So, do you experience any difficulties during the time we have Tourette syndrome? Uh, not too much. Uh, I've been told it doesn't really affect my uh, life expectancy or elevate my intelligence. So. It's just sometimes if I'm talking to someone and I'll, I'll drop a tick or something, it won't be too much of a problem. Uh, other than that, it hasn't really affected me too much. How do you learn to cope with your disorder? Uh, like I said, there's not much I can really do about it, so I just kind of like over time learn to just be able to deal with it because it's kind of just who I am now. Uh, some people think it's kind of funny. I guess it's, uh, it's funny. I haven't really thought about it too much like that, but... Uh, Sometimes I just forget about it, and then of course a tick will happen, and I'll be like, right. <laughs> but otherwise, uh, they give me medication sometimes, like muscle relaxants or something. And I don't know if it really works or not, but I think uh, maybe it helps. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. So, Tourette's is a neurodevelopmental uh, disorder that affects uh, those at a very young age. Um, it can be, it is the repetition of vocal and motor tics, for example, repetitive blinking, repetitive arm movements, or uh, the saying of derogatory statements like uh, curse, curse words. Uh, it doesn't have to be curse words, however, it could be anything. It could be grunting, it could be barking sometimes, uh, meowing. Um, or it could be random words that the patient may just suddenly think of. So, we don't actually know. Uh, biologically, there, it could be inherited, we don't know. But uh, there are some factors in the patient's life that could uh, cause the motor tics and verbal tics. For example, if their collar is too close to their neck, it could cause them to move their neck. Uh, if they're stressed, they could start just having any kind of tics.
um, or simply heat or anger can cause tics. So what are the possible treatment for this syndrome? For light sufferers, I would recommend uh, calming activities like yoga or meditation to calm the mind, uh, lessen stress and anxiety. Um, for more serious cases, I would probably recommend Wafacine, a cardiovascular medication. Uh, it helps calm down the heart and brain. We did used to have a procedure that we do uh, by inserting a battery powered device into the brain of the patient, but we no longer recommend that because it could cause harm to the patient. What do you think of Tristan? Tristan is a very normal patient, I think. He is not, his symptoms are not too serious and they're also not that mild. Um, he may require some treatment, but overall I think he will have a generally good life. He should be able to grow out of this threat and function well in his future. Normally, 3 to 8 per 1,000 in school age children have experienced ticks. Statistics have shown that 1 in 100 Canadians have Tourette syndrome, and the average age of onset is 7 years old. Also, a CDC study using parent report found that 1 of every 360 children of 6 to 17 years of age in the US have experienced a diagnosis of Tourette syndrome. This is about 140,000 children. Among children diagnosed, 37% have been reported as having moderate or severe forms of the conditions. One study that followed youth with Tourette syndrome over time found that at 18 years of age, 47% of the youth have been tics-free the week before they were interviewed. Just over 10% have minimal tics, 28% have mild symptoms, and 11% have moderate to severe tics. Although it affects both genders, boys are 3 to 5 times more likely to have Tourette's than girls. The prevalence of Tourette's syndrome was higher in males in youth, 6.03 per 1,000 in males versus 0.48 per 1,000 in females. In adults, the prevalence of Tourette's syndrome was 0.89 per 1,000 in males versus 0.44 in females. People from all racial and ethnic groups can also have Tourette's. Non-Hispanic white children are twice as likely to have a tics disorder as Hispanic and non-Hispanic black children. 